TVs here. And these are rough, it's such a shame. Look, look at the scuff marks, the bezels, uh, the shell of the TV's been ripped off by the look of it. It's scuffed, absolutely scuffed. The tube looks okay, however. So that's a big JVC, I think it's 32 inches, and of course there's gonna be a nice surprise on the back. This one over here is even worse, this Panasonic. Look how scratched up that screen is. Interesting story, I had that Panasonic, not that one, but the same sort about 13 years ago before I started filming videos for the channel. And I'm, it's one of, the, one of the things I regret not filming because it's also got some good stuff on the back that we'll go around and have a look at in a moment. Picked up a few Xboxes. Again, some more, some more little TVs, a Philips and another, another retro Philips. Again, not of too much interest to me, but I'll put a few of those aside just for now. So here on the back, we've got this Panasonic. It's, uh, it's an Australian TV, of course, but the chassis is a Euro 8D. And then when we look down, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? The big triple SCART, there's component, at least in AV1 and AV4, you'd almost think, oh shit, there's some VGA connectors going on here, but it's not the case in another slot. So hopefully, if it works, I can actually finally make a video of the television. Despite it being in crummy condition, I can still tell you, still make out whether it's a good set or not. And then this JVC, I thought I may have already had this JVC, AV-32H5SA, but I don't think I've had this particular one. And look, the big triple SCART. Yum, yum, that's what we like and another 360 or another Xbox anyway over there. So that's this lot. This is the Sony KDS-60R2000, a 60 inch rear projection television from the year 2006. It is not related or uses CRT technology at all. In fact, it uses Alcos technology, liquid crystal on silicon. Where I live, in parts unknown. Rear projection televisions are rather scarce. This one came up, I was asked, do you want it, Rob? I said, does it work? He said, no, and then invited me to come up and check it out, to which I did and couldn't get it powering. However, when I saw what I saw on the back, being the inputs, the triple SCART and the component video, Naturally, I said yes. We have a small 21 inch, 51 centimeter LG Super Slim CRT TV with component input from the 2006. Over there is big Sony widescreen, KV-SA28M36 with the all important component on the back. No SCART, unfortunately. We'll go around the front and have a look at that. And there that one is, pure flat widescreen put it through its paces one of these days. The minis in this pickup, little 34 centimeter Samsung, <clears throat> little 34 centimeter Digitor, no remote. Now none of these has got SCART. However, this little Digitor has components. So I'm quite pleased with that. And then finally the little Celestial, another 34 centimeter. That one has the remote and the instructions, but no component or SCART and a tub of remotes as well. Not much in the way of CRT remotes, they're more panel remotes, but there are a couple of CRT ones in there. Look at this thing, little Panasonic top dome. Big speaker setup on the top. Big for such a little TV, hopefully the matching remote. Don't know if it is, but it's of the era and it's Panasonic, so it should do the job. Look at this from the side, the dome going around the back no SCART there is chassis MX1 14 incher made in Malaysia a few other of the CRT accessories brand new universal remote picked that one up look at this for some unusual stuff the old PCC RT monitor filter I don't know if these things were for real or what or is it more of a gimmick but there you go, I haven't seen one of those for a long time. And then look at this thing here. Screen top monitor shelf. Nos. I've got a load in the van. This came from Sydney. I won it at an auction. There are a few CRTs in it. Oh.
Yeah, that's one of them. That's one of them. Yeah, that's one of them, and that's and uh, yeah, that's one of them. Yep. And the other right. one's bigger. 442. It's uh, a bit more filled, indeed. Yeah, this one here. This is the one. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, yeah. they're, they're easy to get out. Yeah. Uh, came from a place called Post Op that went into solvency. They had to sell off all the assets, and this is what this is from. They specialised in post production. Well, they did. But COVID hit, and then business went down, and unfortunately, that's what happened. So, I'm going to unpack it. I'm going to see what's in. There's a lot of mystery items that I don't even know what are. They weren't listed. They weren't photographed. So. Mystery surprise, always fun to have. Yes, got a few of these dual monitor stands, brand new in box. Yeah, so these these VTRs, videotape recorders, digital beta cam machines, I've seen a lot of them over the years associated with PVMs and BVMs, but I've never actually got any. I always focus specifically on CRTs. I'm not going to fill the van with CRTs, I'm not going to put these things in there, but this time I've actually managed to get some. These are spare part sorts, they've been stripped a bit, I think, but it'll be alright to have a play with those. Show the camera, mate. This looks like, sort of like a test pattern generator, but more of a, a sink generator. I'm not totally sure what it's all about. Didn't even know it was in there. HD cam. There's another format, HD digital. This, this was a surprise, just go back a bit. This was a surprise in the lot. It was actually two laser displays that were buried at the bottom of the pallets. And weren't listed in the description of the items. I'm quite happy to get those. Always good to get laser displays. It's right crazy, on. it doesn't even have a component in it. 6041 QMs in a rack mount kit. Two of those. Beautiful. Nine inch PVMs, parts only faulty, but I've got heaps of parts, so it doesn't worry me. Panasonic BTS 1000Y, haven't had this one. I don't have it in my collection. Looks very similar to JVC. Not exactly the same inside. We've actually got a big mystery item in that box. The big unknown. And the only other stuff that remains server based things mainly and there's some there's some more Sony little goodness under the seat there but it's mainly just servers and hard drives and, and things like that. Oh my god. We've got the mystery item. Though. We're a bit scared of it though. We're a bit scared of the mystery item. Volca Razor it's got level down here. Well you know what it does. It's it's an electromagnet. It's not even a convertible. You know it'd be cool to plug it in and see how strong the magnetic field was. Yeah, we could die. I don't think so. Imagine, what is it, a razor. So it goes on a conveyor belt, like a hard drive or whatever. Yes. And there's an electromagnetic coil underneath. Right. To actually fry it by overriding the magnetic field in the stored data. Okay, okay. So it's pretty heavy duty a razor. It's a serious, it's a literally a, like a, a razor factory, production line razor. CDS 2500A. Controls. It should be called the Dementia Valve. Look how thick the cable is. Made in USA. How many? Holy are moly! God, look, I don't. I'd be interested to see how much. I'm scared. It'd yeah. probably be in pulses as well, I, like MP style. Well, I can feel the radiation coming off it right now. I feel it. You sound like. You sound like Egon Spangler out of Ghostbusters. Really? You're talking about EMP and field strength and stuff. But it's true. Field strength. It actually says that. Overheat, high, low. So you can turn up like high, low mode. But what well, would be cool would be to, to figure out how much magnetic pull. But there's no way that's going near any CRTs powered on. You imagine the you'd, magnetism, the distortion. Well, yeah, yeah but it could be like permanent. To. Well, you can, no, it actually is, um, use these to actually fix screens as well. Not this, but the same principle. This is the LG 29FD16RX, 29 inch, 68 centimeter, pure flat TV. This is one that I picked up also. I'm in the middle of filming it right now. Component in the back, so that's the draw card. In this lot, this came from Canberra. 
is a couple of Barco matrix switches, although they're geared for actually the projector, Barco projectors. There's a couple of those, and then we've got the load in the back. So this is another side hobby of mine, CRT projectors. We've got a Barco here at the back. We've got that Sony camera cable, big roll of it, rolls of the gray Sony camera cable as well. And then in the center, we've got a Sony G70 CRT projector. And then another one next to exactly the same G70. And I think we've got, I think it's another Sony, a little Sony over there. And then in that white case, like suitcase, there's actually another projector in that. That I haven't had one like this before. I haven't had that case. Never managed to get a projector case. I think that's a proper matching Sony case that's on wheels, a bit like a luggage bag. I'll go around the other side and there was a surprise this often happens when you get crt and if you know someone in a certain industry they'll often have bits and pieces that you may not be expecting so there's this other one i think that's a sony also high resolution 900 i think i don't think it's a barco i could be wrong no it's a sony vph 1020qm and here this was the surprise pvm 2730 done a review of this already one of these years ago for the SCART in the back, so that's the 27 inch version. So not a bad, not a bad little load, like a good weight, a good, well worth the travel to go up to Canberra.